When you hear about Oman, first thing you probably imagine are vast deserts with endless sands and hot sun. Surely there is plenty of that, but in reality the northern part of Oman is pretty rocky and mountainous. It is not too widely known for it just yet, but among other things, it is a perfect location for rock climbing. That is why we went there, to check out the climbing spots ourselves. Climbing history of Oman actually began a while ago. In 1978, a group of four prominent French mountaineers came there to set new routes. Under the leadership of Raymond Renaud, they came to explore and find their way up Jebel Misht, which is the biggest rock face of Arabian Peninsula. At that time, the area of interest was quite unavailable and previously unexplored by foreigners. The expedition leader and his three climbing partners have spent over 20 days finding the longest possible route up the wall. Being mountaineers, they did the first ascent in expedition style, fixing ropes along the way, going up and down multiple times and storing food stashes on the route. Rumors say that Sultan of Oman was so impressed by the effort that he organized a helicopter pickup for the climbers from the summit of Jebel Mesht. This route was eventually called the French Pillar. So given the interesting story, we thought it would be fun to do the same route. Now there is a small climbing community formed in Oman itself, which is actually quite happy to help and give advice about the region. Yeah, we have lots of rock, um, quite a bit of rock. Most of it's adventure sort of trad climbing, but there's probably about 500 sport routes, I think, something like that. So some of them are not published, but some of them are in a guidebook. Fortunately now you don't have to organize a huge expedition to climb the French pillar. You just need some appropriate trad gear and some equipment to bivy on the wall. The route is actually technically quite easy, so even amateurs like us can free climb it in several days. Since the first ascent, the French pillar has been climbed multiple times and you can easily find the topos. And so we figured we'd go and try it, and especially because uh, while there's a lot of sport climbing, quite a lot of sport climbing, I mean, there's so many mountains, so many cliffs, so many rock faces that there's basically endless, endless opportunities for trad. So yeah, the first few days of climbing, we actually did just like single pitch sport climbing mainly. And there's really cool crack called uh, La Gorgette. Where, uh, it's kind of cool because it's most of it is in the shade, or like at least part of it is during the day. Since Oman is said to be one of the hottest countries in the world, where like temperatures can reach 50 degrees Celsius, often enough. So yeah, that was a sort of place to get kind of acclimated. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell more about the full fat crack. <laughs> well, so after the initial three days. We went to another crack that's um, supposed to be quite easy, but uh, at one point we found out that it's much harder than the great says. I mean, the routes there are quite uh, poorly documented, so we picked one that kind of seemed to go up the cliff somewhere. but uh, we kind of ended off route. So the actual crack yeah. that we were supposed to be in was, like, I don't know, a few meters to the left of us. Quite scary as well. Heavy metal. But 
Et kui selle kohta mingi kreitu kirjas. Kui see on kirjas, siis see on uia seitse. Kirjas on uia seitse. Nüüd on aga see kohta ikkagi kirjal. On ready. Ma ei tea. Sa sõid vist aru, miks me siin kõrdi paremale vahepeal läksime. No jah. Jah, Jebel Mist is a beast. It's a really big thousand meters and so 20 some odd pitches and it's limestone, so it's not the most stable. It's a little chossy. And then you add to that that it's south-facing. French Pillar is probably the most repeated route there. And it's probably been climbed like maybe, maybe maximum like 40 times probably. It is such a big wall. We thought it would make sense to walk as close as possible to it the day before the climb and try to locate the route. The French pillar is divided into three sections. There are three first harder pitches, followed by a pretty long mix of scrambling and easier climbs. If you're not familiar with the route, it makes sense to be once just before the last wall, which is four more harder pitches. It was relatively easy to find the start and launch up the 5B section. Um, and uh, it's just really confusing when you're there. The rock is difficult to read. Um, so it's really difficult. It's very easy to get off route. I think most people that climb there get off route at least once or twice. So it's pretty tricky, tricky place. We were planning to climb the route in two days. Reach kind of the middle of the scrambling the first day. The shoot, there was a, like a good bivy site there and then climb to the top the next day. As Larry had said, uh, that the route finding is the hardest part. We got lost after some four or five pitches and then uh, had to rappel down. We actually got lost already after the first two pitches and had to make a BV right at the start of the middle section. I was kind of raising concern that we will not make it all the way up the next day. But anyway, the only thing we could do is just wake up as early as possible and start moving. The middle part kind of traverses along kind of ramps and ledges. It's sometimes a bit more like climbing, sometimes a bit more like scrambling. It was still sort of daytime and we were going up the scrambly bits and it seemed like, okay, well, fair enough, we can do it. Uh, but then at one point, sorry, the sanity kicked in and we realized that there's no way we're going to make it uh, up by nightfall. And so we had to spend another night on the, the cliff. Like we found a actually a really good bivy site and spent the night there and then went up the next day. From there on, it's like maybe two pitches of like this relatively scrambly bit. And then you get to the, like the final, I don't know, four pitches. Nii, kas on punased? Ani inspekteerime üle või? Ta kinnas käära. Selja on sellised. 
Siis see on jumala hell, need asjad on jumala läbi. Siin teibi all on ka jumal valus. Siin on mul mingi põletik sees, mis on valus. No ja siin on vesivilja. No ja. Nii, nüüd peaks eeselt kõige kokku pakkima. So eventually we had, what was it, nine liters of water for the three of us for two days. Or something in that. Sort of in that category. Which ended up being not enough, as we later learned. <laughs> I mean, it was enough, but uh, it would have been was... nice to have a bit more. Halfway during the descent, we drank like the last few drops of, uh, of water that we had. By the time we got down, we were, well, nice and dehydrated, I'd say.